Hi, my name is Mike Dellinger. I'm an associate professor in the departments of surgery and molecular biology at UT Southwestern Medical Center. My lab studies complex lymphatic anomalies. And today I'm going to present our latest unpublished work, which shows that trametinib can block or delay progression in a transgenic mouse model of Gorham-Stout disease. Gorham-Stout disease is a life-threatening lymphatic anomaly that can be caused by somatic activity mutations in KRAS. Patients with Gorham-Stout disease can have irregular lymphatic vessels in their soft tissues and lymphatic vessels in bone. Trametinib is an FDA-approved MEK inhibitor that was recently found to prevent lymphatic dysplasia in soft tissues in a KRAS mutant model of Gorham-Stout disease. However, the effect of trametinib on bone disease in KRAS mutant mice was not assessed because most KRAS mutant mice die before they have significant bone involvement. So the objective of this study was to characterize the effect of trametinib on intraosseous lymphangiogenesis and osteolysis in a different clinically relevant transgenic mouse model of Gorm-Stout disease. Our hypothesis is that MEK inhibition will suppress intraosseous lymphangiogenesis and osteolysis in our mouse model. So to test this hypothesis, we performed a prevention study with trametinib and OSX TTA TETO VEGFC mice. VEGFC is a growth factor that stimulates lymphangiogenesis and our transgenic mice express VEGFC in bone, develop lymphatics in bone, and lose cortical bone. Before we performed our animal experiment, we first investigated the effect of trametinib on VEGFC-induced signaling in lymphatic endothelial cells. In this experiment, we pre-treated lymphatic endothelial cells with either DMSO or trametinib, and then treated cells with recombinant human VEGFC for 10 minutes. And we found that trametinib blocked VEGFC-induced activation of ERK in our lymphatic endothelial cells. However, trametinib did not uh, affect VEGFC-induced activation of AKT. So these results suggest that trametinib can specifically block VEGFC-induced MAP kinase signaling in lymphatic endothelial cells. We then performed our prevention study with our transgenic mouse model of Gorham-Stout disease. In this experiment, we placed mice on doxycycline water during embryonic development, and that prevented the expression of VEGFC during embryogenesis. We then placed mice on normal drinking water to induce the expression of VEGFC in bone during postnatal life. We started to treat mice with either vehicle or trametinib when the mice were 21 days old. This is a time point at which there are no lymphatic vessels in bone. And we stopped our experiment uh, when mice were 30 days old. And at the end of the experiment, we collected tissues from mice, sectioned the tissues, and then stained them for lymphatics. I just want to briefly go over how we analyze lymphatics in bone in our mice. So what we do is we take a picture of uh, tissues that have been stained with antibodies that highlight lymphatic vessels. We then place a grid over the picture and count the number of times the grid lines intersect either within or on a lymphatic vessel. And we refer to this value as our lymphatic vessel index value. The first tissues we looked at, or the first tissue we looked at uh, was femur from vehicle and trametinib treated mice. And in this experiment, we stained femur sections with an antibody that recognizes podoplanin. And podoplanin is a marker of lymphatic endothelium it is also expressed by some osteocytes, which are cells that become trapped in bone. In this experiment, we found that trametinib-treated animals had significantly fewer lymphatic vessels in their femurs than the vehicle-treated animals. We then wanted to see if this uh, result held up in another tissue, so we analyzed ribs in vehicle and trametinib-treated mice, and we looked at the periosseous muscle the cortical bone and marrow cavity for the ribs. And we found that uh, vehicle treated animals had more expansive lymphatic uh, vessels in their periosseous muscle, 
They also had lymphatic vessels which invaded or breached the periosteum and uh, began to uh, uh, invade bone. And they also had lymphatic vessels in their marrow cavity. Trement have treated animals had normal appearing lymphatics in the periosteous muscle, uh, no lymphatic vessels in the cortical bone or in the marrow cavity. So we just went on to quantify these phenotypes. And like I said before, uh, trementinib treated animals had significantly fewer lymphatics in the periosteous muscle, the cortical bone, and marrow cavity. We then assessed the effect of trementinib on bone structure. And to do this, we measured bone porosity in H&E stained tissue sections. And we found that cortical bone was in uh, vehicle treated mice was more porous than bone in our trementinib treated animals. So this result suggests that trementinib uh, can prevent bone loss in our transgenic mouse model of Gorm Stout disease. So with respect to our future directions, uh, we plan on performing intervention and reversal experiments with trementinib in our VEGFC transgenic mice. We also plan on performing a spatial transcriptomics analysis with our transgenic mice. And this will allow us to begin to investigate the molecular mechanisms driving bone loss in our transgenic mouse model of Gorm Stout disease. And we also plan on optimizing our KRAS mutant model so we can further study bone disease in that model. So to summarize, uh, we have found that OSX CTA Teto VEGFC transgenic mice develop lymphatic vessels in bone and lose cortical bone. We found that trementinib can block VEGFC-induced activation of ERK, but not AKT in human lymphatic endothelial cells, and that trementinib can prevent or delay lymphatic invasion of bone and cortical bone loss in our transgenic mice. So taken together, we think that our results provide a further support for the testing of trementinib as a treatment for Gorm Stout disease. With that, I would just like to acknowledge the people in my lab that have worked on this project as well as other projects in the lab, uh, my various collaborators um, and our sources of funding. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any of your questions.